Hi guys, you're so welcome back to this channel, Narc Con. Um, on this channel, as you know, if you've been here for quite some time, we delve into the narcissistic personality disorder in order to really understand it because survivors and targets of a narcissist really need to know what they've been through in order to fully heal and get the benefit going forwards. So if you're new here as well, you're so welcome. Thank you for dropping by and consider like, share and subscribe if you get value from this forthcoming video. Today, what I'd like to look at, and it's something you come to terms with at the end of an interaction with a narcissist, and it's what actually lies behind the mask. And it's a case of rewiring your brain into away from the movie star character that the mask presented to you and to actually look at what was really there what was really there and not what was presented to you. And I call this glimpsing behind the mask or coming to terms with the reality of the actual emptiness of the personality of the narcissist, the emptiness and the continual need to search in order not to delve into that emptiness because that emptiness is dark, it's scary, it's chaotic it's unstable, it's envious of everything it sees and it needs to destroy in order to believe when they see something that is not dark, that is not like them, that that is actually the illusion and that their reality is the actual reality for every human being. So that's why they attempt to destroy you and to take you down and to feed off you and to keep going in cycles so that they never have to stop and look at what's actually there because it is empty, dark and of a nothingness. And believe me, that's where they're coming from. So in, in my opinion, just studying it and listening to clients and my own experience, I see three stages and tell me what you saw and when you saw it in the comments. I see three stages of the mask slipping and you getting a glimpse of the truth, not what's presented to you. Remember, the mask is a construct of a lot of character traits that this individual has seen, that they kind of stick on to the mask to become a creation, a character of creation. And you, you can kind of say, well, where, Paula, does that differ from, you know, me? Because I'm a character and my personality is made up of parts. You have a stability. You have a core value. You have made your mind up about what person you are. And that doesn't change much. It grows and your behaviours can change. But the narcissist is is and nothing, there's nothing stable. From one minute to the next, the narcissist can change its mind. Whatever it is in there changes its mind. It's, it's predatory. It's not, um, it's not of growth. It's of destruction in order to survive. It needs to destroy. It's, it's like a fire that needs fuel to keep it burning. Whereas we are able to self-regulate our problem is when we get involved with a narcissist, um, our validation system changes from self-regulation to getting validation from the narcissist because we've been manipulated into that situation. Back to the point on this podcast. The first time I believe that you see behind the narcissist's mask, and this is usually in a kind of a long-term relationship. This is usually very well seen in the intimate setting because it's more intense, it's more linear in that setting than it would be with a familial setting. But sometimes you can see it with a friend as well. So you are in the love bomb stage when the narcissist is mirroring you back to yourself and you're actually falling in love with yourself. But the experience is exquisite. The experience is exquisite. It's very validating. It's very wonderful. And it keeps getting better and better and better in the love bomb stage. Now take, for instance, guys, imagine yourself 
having to wear a mask that was difficult to breathe through, that you had to keep up. You had to, you were presenting this person character to another person they were reacting really well to it they were kind of telling you what they liked in the world and you were adding these bits of that onto the mask but the mask was covering up a an emptiness a rage a resentment um a, a willing a willingness and a need an instinct to destruct an instinct to be angry an instinct to feed and feed and feed but the predator couldn't pounce yet so the mask had to stay on you're wearing this mask day and night in the shower in bed all the time and you knew that you had to keep it on very very securely in the love bomb stage because you needed your prey to come to you to come to you when it was going to be safe to engage with them hook them for us, for the targets in a love bomb stage, you're going along getting, feeling more and more secure, more and more that this relationship is the relationship for you, that this person is the one. And it's like climbing a mountain in stages and you're making great progress and you can see the summit and the summit, you know the view from there is amazing and everything is going well. You have all the equipment you need and you're feeling secure, happy, content, excited, animated one loving the experience and suddenly you slip suddenly the hook comes out of the mountain and you drop 20 feet and you think you're going to die because you think that this is the point that this is such a shocking thing to happen you're about to fall down and you're about to die that's what happens in the love bomb stage when the narcissist's mask slips when suddenly they turn on you in a kind of a, a heat test, they're kind of testing you to see how far you're hooked, but they'll say something really derogatory and you're, what? Did I actually hear that? And you actually question whether, you know, you look at them and question whether they've actually said this. It's like they punch you in the guts. You're not expecting it. It comes from left side. That's when you see the first glimpse of the mask slipping. Now, depending on your reaction, they'll quickly put the mask back up and they'll go forward because that's when they estimate how much control they've already gained over you by your reaction to the slip of the mask. My slip of the mask came, I think, about five to six months in on a foreign holiday when I got really derogatory comments about go, you know, what are you doing here with me? Go and spend time on your own or something like that. It was a real push off. And it was the first after a very strong love bomb stage. So it was. it's very shocking when it happens. You do glimpse this angry character behind the mask. The mask is put back on and you're continued to be hooked and you're continued to be manipulated. And basically they're extracting whatever they want at that stage and they're doing it quicker as you go into the devaluation stage because they know you've hooked they've hooked you they've brought the prey into a corral say a fenced in area so that they feel pretty safe to go out and have a feed each day and that you're not going to escape at this stage that's the first glimpse guys of the mask slipping of you wondering who the hell is the person behind the mask? But because they re-engage with the love bomb stage and the experience is so wonderful, you, that thought goes to the very back of your mind. You don't actually want to see it. It's akin to the red flags. The second glimpse you'll get of the mask slipping, and this is a shocker. This is in the devaluation stage. Remember, the narcissist has had to put the mask back on and has had to go forward keeping you to feed off you, but not wanting you to get smart enough to jump out of the corral and to, to escape or to be looking for an escape or to escape at night when the narcissist's not looking. So this is when you are in the devaluation stage and the narcissist is fed up keeping this hot, sticky mask on that they can't breathe through and they feel fairly secure that at this stage they need to keep you in check. They take the resentment out on you. They need to, it's like an, a boiler exploding. 
it's a boiler combusting. It needs to let the air out of itself so that it will continue functioning behind the mask, so to speak. And that's the narcissistic rage. And by God, that's a shocker when you are first introduced to, to the narcissist's rage. And we've all heard it and people experience the same thing. The same dark demonic energy comes in or out of that person. And they, the eyes go black, the pupils dilate. Sometimes they spit and foam, they're gesticulating and their whole focus is on you is on you and derogatory, malicious, disgusting deprecation of you as a person. And you will be, where is this coming from? Who is this? You do actually get a sense that this is unworldly, that there is something possessing this person because they are so transformed into a different state and the shock of the person that you know and love at the time and seeing this creature being inhabited by something that is not of this world is a big glimpse behind the actual rage, jealousy, darkness, destructive energy that is behind the mask. And what's even weirder is when it's finished, everything goes calm. The narcissist is simply puts the mask back on, clips it behind the ears, pulls it down the neck and off you go again. At this stage, you're fighting for the narcissist to be the person they were at the beginning of the relationship. And you know in your heart and tell me you didn't know that there was something dreadfully wrong, dreadfully wrong when you got this, what I call midterm um, glimpse behind the mask. But you were very, very weakened at this stage. You were like a prey that had been fed on and you were with the intermittent reinforcement, you're fed the future faking and you're fed a good of good bit of the love bombing stage again to bring you back in line to fatten you up so to speak to get more supply from you the third time the mask slips and even if you leave the narcissist and take the narcissist back at some stage it's usually at the discard or after the discard if you meet the narcissist, then you are meeting a cold stranger and it is the weirdest feeling in the world. It's the most awful, devastating, empty feeling in the world. And that is what essentially the narcissist needs you to feel. The narcissist needs you to feel what they feel all the time so that they can justify to themselves that all human beings have this feeling and all human beings need to manipulate each other to get needs met and that you now know what it really feels like so you can stop your, you know, lovey-dovey, um, kind, generous crap because that doesn't actually exist. The narcissist is convinced that everybody is like them. And they're essentially showing you that they don't believe in who you presented in the beginning of the relationship as being an authentic person, as caring for other people, because you are now even worse than they actually are on a day-to-day -day basis. You're so shocked, you're so devastated, you're so broken. There is no hint of the person that you fell in love with. It's, it's, the mask is off. They look at you like you're an idiot. They look at you in the most demeaning way possible. Amused, they'll smirk. It's, 
It's like the biggest relief for them to not have to wear the mask to you. Now, if anyone else comes along, they'll quickly fix the mask on whichever mask they've customised to these other people. But you will have seen the truth and the truth is ugly. The truth is really ugly. You're just seeing a con person who's destructive, who has nothing about them, who has essentially no no integrity, no centre, no being. It's as if there's a shell of a body standing looking at you with eyes that are kind of finished a computer program and that are empty and dead, but that are in some ways sadistic because the only thing that there seems to be there is their sense, excuse me, of empowered pleasure at your distress and amusement because at that stage they're feeling something, they're feeling empowered, their rage is dissipated for a while until they go in search or they possibly groomed anyway, another source of supply. But this is part of the cycle. This is when they kind of view the bones of their prey and go, yep, yeah, I had the meal. I got you. I got you. It's up to you at this stage to protect yourself, to leave that predator. That's the narcissist's illusion that they've got you. Don't let them get you. Rebuild yourself and come back stronger. You take all the pleasure away from the narcissist at that stage as you rebuild yourself. The narcissist views your success as a total failure on their part to sustain the belief that all humans are like them. And in fact, your empowerment after and recovery after narcissistic abuse is a double win for good in the world because you go away from that relationship so much stronger and so much more caring and so much more able to do good for other people. Essentially, the devil hasn't won. And that's the way I look at it, because the energy in the narcissist behind the mask, the energy surrounding the narcissist is n in no way a growth energy. It's a dark, destructive, destroying, evil, malicious, angry, rageful, jealous, bitter, black being. Stay away from those devils, guys. Grow within yourself after this experience and you will feel the exact measure from the pain you felt with the narcissist to the joy you'll feel in recovery. So if that was 100%, your joy will match that. And that is what the narcissistic demon cannot achieve. You will come out the winner Keep the faith, keep doing what's good for you and look back on this experience as your opportunity, your opportunity because of you and because of how you handle your recovery, your greatest achievement or one of your greatest achievement to set you on the path to climb to your own summit of a mountain not to have anyone knock you down halfway, not to have anyone spit and spew at you with their rageful, disgusting energy and to get to the top of that mountain and you enjoy that view because you have deserved it. Till the next time, guys, take great care of yourselves and I will see you in the next podcast. Bye for now.